welcome to this week's Rocksmith Developer Stream. I am your host and community developer, Doug Lilly, and I welcome you to the stream. This week we are looking at uh, the first of the second volume of the Rocksmith Exercises, starting with uh, the Rocksmith Easy Exercises, Volume 2. Uh, so we're going to take a look at some of those exercises and how they can be incorporated into a few songs that we will play throughout the stream. Uh, we're taking your questions. We're having giveaways. Uh, make sure you look out for Yubi Jurassic in the chat. He's a community manager. Uh, he's doing the moderation and will be leading you through your raffles uh, throughout the course of the stream. Not one going on right now. First one will come a little bit later. Uh, we've got some stuff from Ernie Ball, and we have uh, copies of this week's DLC. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, right now, we're going to take a look at the, uh, the exercise pack. Uh, the Rocksmith Easy Exercises, Volume 2. And we'll be back with Greg Studley after that. And there you go. Uh, there's a look at volume two of the e Rocksmith Easy Exercises uh, created and designed and recorded by our own Greg Studley. Hello. Hey. Welcome to the stream Thanks, once man. more. So uh, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're a big part of these exercise streams because you're a big part of the exercises. I'd say that's a true statement. Yeah. For I anybody who hasn't seen one of the uh, the exercise streams or one of our streams in general, usually uh, with the DLC pack, we'll just go through on the stream. We'll play through the songs, talk about them, uh, maybe the, the, the note tracking thereof or just what makes the song uh, fun or unusual or educational. Uh, with the exercise packs, um, there's they're not meant to be sort of performed. No, no, I th I right. think I think yeah, it should be specified that these these exercise packs are all about refining your technique of the instrument. So there's there's a, a bunch of techniques that are unique to playing guitar. Um 
and these are the ones that you're going to see most often in songs. They're going to include uh, playing on a single string, which we call linear playing, uh, hammer-ons, pull-offs, string switching, which is extremely common, and string skipping, which is not quite as common, but normally it's one of the weakest parts of people's playing. Right. So we decided to throw it in. But, and I mean, there's other things that you could come across in songs being you know, sweet picking and, and are arpeggiating different things in different right. orders. But th these are all fundamental aspects right. that you're going to apply in numerous songs all over the place. Right. Like yeah. you, when usually before these streams, you and I traditionally will we'll sort of go through and we'll pick out some songs that we think uh, exemplify some of the, the given techniques. And generally it's, it's not a big problem because these are so intrinsic in just modern music. Oh, they're just they're yeah. embedded everywhere. Yeah. They, they are they are the basic techniques of the instrument, which is why the focus has remained on these techniques. Oh yeah. Um so I would also want to say hello to our to our other guest here, uh Francois Luang, how you doing? Good, how about you? Doing well. Welcome to the stream. Thank you. So you're going to you're going to play the part of the student yes. here. Uh so what we do differently for the exercise streams uh, than we do for our normal weekly streams is we're just going to take a little look uh at each of the exercises. Uh, with with the the two guests playing them, and then they will play a song that incorporates uh, whatever technique or techniques we've looked at, uh, and and we might talk about it how they're when they show up. It's usually going to be pretty obvious, especially for hammer-ons, pull-offs, that sort of thing. You'll yeah, see as soon as you see it, you'll know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, these these are techniques that are just strewn throughout rock music or just contemporary guitar-driven music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you for joining us. Um, first, we're going to take a look at uh, hammer-ons, the hammer-on exercise. Once again, we're just going to look at a couple phrases of it. Uh, with this uh, volume two, uh, what would you say is the biggest difference, the key difference between the exercises, especially the easy exercises from volume one and the exercises for volume two. Sure, so th the, the main thing is everything that we tried to do in volume one was based upon consecutive finger movement, either one to two, two to three, three to four, or in reverse order. Yeah. Everything we're trying to do in this pack is starting to get you to understand how to use your fingers outside of that order because you might play chromatic passages, you might need to go to the next fret, but especially in doing things like scales or melodic passages, very often you're skipping over a fret. So. Uh, a good example is like in these hammer-on and pull-off exercises, we've incorporated all combinations that you could possibly use. So one to two, one to three, one to four, two to three, two to four, and three to four. That's it. That's every combination you're going to find. So we wrote all of those into the exercises so that your fingers can match every combination that, the, that they're going to possibly play inside of a song. I believe before we got started, I think it was Bisco Bid uh, said, Greg is going to make me hammer-on with my pinky, isn't he? Yes. 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 You're welcome. You <laughs> okay. Pinky so power. <laughs> Pinky uh, power. <laughs> uh, if you do have any questions, uh, please uh, give a shout to UB Jurassic in the chat. Once more, that is uh, Brian Turner. He is the community manager for Rocksmith. Uh, just give him a shout. And assuming he's uh, still with power, he is on the East Coast right now. Pinky uh, power? He is with power. Pinky currently. power. Well, he's with electricity. Oh. He's it's not nearly as exciting. Is with electricity. All right. Uh, and so hopefully, he stays good. that way. Uh, not for our sake, but for his. Yes. Um, he will uh, get any questions that you have and uh, get those questions to us so that hopefully we can answer some of them throughout the stream. Uh, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the hammer-ons easy exercise. Two. If you're going to do this, use all your fingers. So here's your one to two, one to three, one to four, two, three, two, four, three, four. And just repeat. The key to doing this is to keep your hand just in one location and play all these different combinations. So do everything you can to ensure you're not going to move too much. How are you doing over there? What I'm writing. You look beautiful. Nice. Just going to move up a fret, do the whole pattern all over again. Sometimes people say that these hammer-on exercises and pull-off exercises are actually harder at a slower speed than they are at a faster speed. So it's good to kind of practice them at, uh, all the way from start to finish because you'll start off at a slow tempo and you'll finish at a fairly quick one. But this is actually where you build really good finger control, is yep. doing it at a slow tempos. Um, 
guess we're still going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After a while, you don't even have to look at it. You'll just, you'll just, <laughs> just get the pattern. It's just a pattern. Yeah. yeah. When you know the pattern, you know. It, but um, and these all do still have, you know, the leveling built in. So if for some reason any of these are difficult, you can always start it at a lower level to learn the pattern and then build the pattern into yeah. place. Yeah. Do you want to cut it after this? We should. All right, cool. Uh, so yeah, I had I saw somebody uh, uh, around the internet recently uh, talking about how these don't even make you use your pinky. <laughs> and I guess uh, there's some some misunderstanding there. You're supposed to use your pinky. You're supposed to use your pinky. We, we can't we can't enforce that. We can, from it from we here. We cannot. We, we don't know what which fingers you're using. Yeah. But you are meant to use your pinky if you're playing it as it's designed. You're going to be using your pinky. Yeah, the, the main idea is for every sequence, keep your hand in one spot. You you could easily just move your hand over yeah, just do and then reach. move it back and move it over, move it back. But uh, so I mean, much effort. Well, it defeats the purpose. It, it defeats the purpose. And also, when you get to that song where you're going to have to use your pinky, you're not going to be able to use it. Right. Like, you're, you're only hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so don't, don't cheat yourself. Use your pinky. That's what uh, he says. Stay in the anchor zone. If you're not aware, some people aren't aware. I don't know if it's, uh, if it's not explicit enough. But uh, some people aren't sure which fingers you're supposed to keep where according to the note track. Now, there is typically a highlighted section of the, the note way uh, that will show you where to keep your fingers, one, two, three, four. And those fret numbers are also highlighted underneath the neck of the guitar. So if you've got four, five, six, seven highlighted, that's where you want to keep four, five, six, seven. You want to keep on one, two, three, four at four, yeah. five, six, seven. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Yeah, that, that both worked. Of those ways to work. That worked. Okay, <laughs> we're good. So yeah, so that's how you know that that's that's your anchor zone. That's where you're expected to keep your hand uh, to give you the the best chance of reaching those notes, and to have an adequate performance of playing. An it. adequate performance. Yes. Yeah. Hashtag. Let's move on. Let's move <laughs> on. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now we're going to take a look at the pull-offs exercise. Now, same kind uh, of deal. You're just using all finger patterns that are going to possibly happen. Sure. So it's it's essentially everything you just did, or everything we just did. In reverse. Yeah. In reverse. All right. A lot of people do often find that pull-offs are actually a little more difficult than hammer-ons. So if, if you know you need to practice this one a little more, if you're new to the whole hammer-on pull-off concept, then uh, don't feel like that's a strange thing. It's actually pretty normal if you got to spend a little extra time on these. Also really helpful if you ever want to get into legato playing yeah. is I mean when you're not gonna have to pick as much and a lot of these notes are gonna purely come from your fingers, this technique is crucial. This is really what you need to get down in order to You know what's funny this whole time? I don't actually know if I'm reading the top or bottom. <laughs> well, I just assumed I was reading the top this entire time, but I actually have no idea which one yeah, I am. Yeah, you should be the top, but I think they're the same. Well he's copying all my notes. <laughs> Miss a few notes and then see which one it tells me you missed. And remember, as you go up the neck, you are going to constantly get faster. So, just like the first volume of uh, these exercises, you're going to start at 60 beats per minute. You're going to end up at 120. So you're you're essentially going to double your speed every yeah. time you do an exercise. Do we want to do we want to cut this one after this uh, this rundown? Now, later, anytime, anytime. Now. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, that was a nice so trail off there. Question, question about pull-offs. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you tend to keep the notes from ringing? Because that's that's a thing that a lot of people encounter uh, when they pull off. They might to brush against other strings. Oh, to br oh, if you're gonna brush against ringing. other strings. So there, there's a couple reasons why your notes might ring out. One of them is just the harmonics of your strings. So for example, if uh, if I'm to play this A, let's see if I can get volume here for a minute. Got some volume. See if I can make this work. If I play this A, and then I stop it, there's still a note there, and it's actually resonating this A, yeah, the A string. So 
there are different harmonics that are actually going to activate other strings, even if you're not intrinsically playing that string. So what you need to do in those instances is a lot of, a lot of times what people do is use part of their picking hand to mute other strings to ensure that they're only hearing the one string that they need. The method I personally use is I'll, I'll use my fretting hand to mute these strings by doing it kind of this way. Yeah, like the And arch. it's really hard to kind of to kind of mute all the strings simultaneously, but you can usually mute the strings like underneath the one you're activating. So you can do this and mute all these with this, and then I'll use my right hand to kind of mute the higher end, or the, I should say the low strings. So therefore, when I play, the only string that even has the ability to move is the one I played. Okay. So a lot of it has to do with string muting, and you're not going to notice it so much on low gain settings, but when you go into high gain, when you have a lot Let's of the drive and distortion, those little ghost notes yeah. are going to ring out really loud. Yeah. So if you want to see how well you're doing it, actually go into the game, find a song with a really high drive setting, and practice it that way and see if you're only hearing the note you want to hear or if by chance you're actually getting these little artificial notes in there as well. And it could help because you can go into the mixer and you can turn the game volume down. Oh, yeah. You turn it down uh, just where you can just hear where you're supposed to, like hear cues that mm -hmm. you need, and then make sure you're, you're listening to your guitar uh, pretty, pretty closely. Yeah, I, I think you actually pointed out something really important that not everybody knows to do, is when you're playing either in the game or outside, always listen to what you are playing. A lot of times when people play with recordings, they're actually listening to the recording, but not listening to what they are playing. Right. Because they're just like, oh, I, I can hear the song, I'm going to play to it. But they're not referencing, well, is my timing exactly the same as what I'm referencing? They're just yeah. listening to the reference. So make sure that you're listening to both the quality of your playing and the timing and quality of everything that you're playing too. That goes for a band setting, a rocksmith scenario, whatever it might be. And you can sort of take that in turns. You know, maybe the, the first time you want to approach a song, just play, th just listen to it. Oh listen yeah. To it once. You'll play you it better play if you're familiar with, with what you're listening to. Yes. And then probably the more the more you play a song, the more you'll probably start focusing on your own performance of the song and not just the song as it's recorded. Yes, very much so. Uh, speaking of songs, as they're recorded, mm -hmm. uh, you guys are going to play a song that use some hammer-ons and pull-offs. And yes. so, many more of so, so many more techniques. Uh, yeah, th oh this, yeah, this, this one's kind of... I think this one... This, this one's got a little bit of everything, This is one is we great. marked that was like good for any technique. So yeah. It, it just sort of... So I'm, I'm going to switch instruments yeah. on this guy. I will help. Um, yeah, this I should can. be a fun one. Oh, I did I did the thing I shouldn't have done. What did you... The have thing done? I shouldn't have done. Oh, yeah. The thing. Okay. We'll we'll get it worked out. Um, I'm back from doing the thing I shouldn't have welcome done. Welcome back. I, honestly, there's much worse things I could have done. I'm having a really difficult time here. I figured it out. Don't worry, <laughs> everything's fine. You new to the, you new to instruments? Uh, you got it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm not I'm not used to labor, <laughs> just lifting and setting things down. Uh, so we're gonna play. You're gonna play. Uh, Are you gonna go my way by Lenny Kravitz? So there's, there's a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs, I think, in both the guitar part and the bass part. Yeah. yeah. And and the bass part has this. Uh, actually, I didn't realize how awesome the bass part was during the guitar solo mm -hmm. oh, until yeah. I was playing it this morning. And I was like, oh, wow. This thing, thing moves. Like, as far <laughs> as like linear playing goes and, and playing on a string and moving things around, like this is a great part. I, yeah. I never realized how cool it was until I was playing through it. And if I'm not mistaken... Uh, I'm going to give extra kudos to Lenny Kravitz because he's one of those few artists, and I don't know if he did it specifically on this song or not, mm -hmm. but he's one of those few artists that actually plays everything when he records. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every instrument. There are all, I mean, like Prince did it. I think McCartney did it on an album. Dave Grohl's done it. Dave Grohl's done it. So, the, I mean, there are few people who actually have succeeded in laying down an entire vision. Yeah, all yeah. all out of their own head and yeah. playing it themselves, and I I did almost all that on my own album. I could I, I don't play <laughs> drums, so I wasn't able to do the drums. But it's an undertaking when you do that. You got to think like seven people. Right, right. You've got to be able to disagree with yourself. Yes, <laughs> and and, and know that you're both right and wrong. Keep that in mind. Keep that thought in mind. <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about it later. Uh, so here is Are You Gonna Go My Way, uh, Lenny Kravitz. This is from uh, Rocksmith One. This is an on disc track. Uh, first Rocksmith. And again, if you've got questions... I've been questions, craving hearing you play this. It's <laughs> going to be good. <laughs> I have been wanting to hear it. If you've got questions, <laughs> let you be Jurassic in the chat. No.
the hell came up with those weird rhythms right in that one spot. I always have wondered that. How he ever came up with something with that kind of... Turn the phaser on. <laughs> Hashtag nice riff, they say. Yeah, it is, no, yeah. it is. It's a fun, yeah, that's it's a, a great yeah, riff. A, yeah, um, somebody had a somebody had a comment on it, uh, and then I kept reading other things, and I lost it. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, oh. so so that one, a uh, little bit of hammer on pull off, mostly in the the solo there for the guitar, mm -hmm. bass sort of comes in and out. Yeah, the the bass but actually d just does a, a lot of in. It's pretty simple finger work. There's a little bit yeah. of like string switching, which we'll kind of get to in the upcoming exercises here. Sure. But, um, but the middle of that solo, like if you want, if you want to have something where you're going to move around and and use lots of different finger combinations, that's a yeah. great little place to do it. And yeah. I, I do have some questions. I'm going to hold on to them for now, and maybe maybe come back uh, a little bit later with with several questions all together. Cool. Uh, but for now, I want to go ahead and thank Francois for stopping by. Thank you for stopping and playing. Uh, right now, we're going to give away, do our first giveaway for the stream. This is our first Ernie Ball prize pack. Uh, so if you are in chat right now and watching live, uh, please read what UB Jurassic is telling you in the chat for your chance to win uh, the first Ernie Ball prize pack of this stream. If you win, you will get two sets of strings, one six-string set for your guitar, one four-string set for your bass. Uh, you're going to get a dozen picks from Ernie Ball, three picks from us here at Rocksmith, the Spectrum Plectrum. Uh, as so named, uh, at least in part, by Jean 308. Uh, we've got a red Ernie Ball strap, a bright red Ernie Ball strap uh, for your guitar or bass. You can use it on either. Uh, a package of Ernie Ball Wonder Wipes, a variety pack to keep your strings and your guitar's neck and body uh, cleaned, polished, and uh, ready to go. Let those strings last a good bit longer than they would have otherwise. And uh, you're also going to get probably a couple of extra stuff uh, a couple of extra things from, from the studio here. Uh, we are coming at you from San Francisco. We are Ubisoft Studio San Francisco. Uh, so thank you for joining us here on the West Coast. Um, if you win, you will get a whisper from UB Jurassic. So make sure you have your whispers turned on, or your ability to be whispered turned on. He will get from you your full name, your shipping address, and your telephone number. We do need all three pieces of information in order to get your prize to you. Uh, so please uh, make sure you get that to him. And if you're outside of the US, we do ship outside of the US, but it will make it a lot easier on us if you split up your address line by line so that I send it to the correct place. Because I don't want to send your prize to a different person. That wouldn't be cool for either of us. Uh, and if you win, uh, if you want to give us a shout on social media, we love to see it when our, uh, when, when our viewers win the prizes. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, we are at Rocksmith Game. And uh, while you're on there, give at Ernie Ball a shout and uh, let them know uh, with the hashtag IPlaySlinky uh, that you're a winner. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably get, give you a like for that uh, if, if you're into that sort of thing. We are about to look at the next couple of exercise packs. So again, we're back with Greg Studley and now Andrew Levin. Welcome. Yo, yo. There we go. Two hey. note trackers. <laughs> Hello. Note trackers Hello. together. Hey. 
Talking about exercises. Talking about exercises. Talking about exercises. We can actually be in the same room and the world will <laughs> yeah. not explode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah it's, it seems pretty rare that both of you. I think you used to play uh, on the stream together a lot when I was in North Carolina. That was when you, when you two were first. When we were newbies. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Then people got used to us. Yeah. And they were like, ah, we can't have. We yeah, can't that's have enough of them. Both of you. So this is a bit of a reunion. Yeah, issue. yeah. And I, I also think that you know we try and get other people in the office involved. Yeah. And yeah. You know. <laughs> it is, it is, it's nice to have this. Uh, Little reunion here. Totally. So both of you have taught guitar, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Uh, so how much do these sort of exercises, how much would this sort of thing kind of play into a normal uh, sort of tutor situation? What would you say, Andrew? It totally depends on the student and where they're at um, because definitely in the beginning, like the most important thing is just getting a sound out of the instrument and getting your fingers going. And uh, so I would always try and figure out exercises and things like that that involved all of the fingers, uh, particularly the pinky. You're going to want to yeah. use your <laughs> pinky because seriously, not using your pinky is like trying to run with one of your legs. Like, yeah, you can hop across a, uh, you know, if uh, track if you want or if you have, you know, if you can run with both your legs unless you have a reason not to. Like Django Reinhardt, obviously, he couldn't play with all of his <laughs> fingers, so yeah. he, he found a way around that, and that's amazing and beautiful, but if you have your pinky, you should use it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also, you're probably not Django Reinhardt. I'm not Django right. Reinhardt. Right. So. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but yeah, so uh, then depending on also what students are having trouble with, particularly a lot of uh, intermediate players will have things like, for example, maybe they can play decently well, but they're not so good with their pinky or they're not so good with string skips. Um, I would definitely drill... Uh, that into their playing. So where, wherever their weak spots are that are preventing them from playing the songs that they want to play is is what I would what I would do. And a lot of it is mechanical. Yeah. So a lot a lot for for beginners. I think a lot a lot of people when they start go for more of a rhythm guitar approach. Yeah. Um, which is great because there's always I mean guitar is technically part of the rhythm section, you know. Um, but as soon as people start, yeah, yeah <laughs> right. As soon as people start branching into lead, though, they find that there's all these techniques that they never, like, had to conquer when they were mm -hmm. doing rhythm stuff. Right. Like, especially, like, a lot of people think, oh, well, lead playing is all about this hand. Well, if this one can't coordinate with it, <laughs> it doesn't really matter how good this mm -hmm. hand is if this one can't keep up. Yeah. So it's actually not about how good you are with your fretting hand. It's how good your hands are coordinating. Mm -hmm. And so this is just a giant coordination exercise. And, and when you get into lead playing, sometimes you just pick the right songs and you get your coordination down. It's great. Right. But if for some reason you don't, that's when, like for myself as a teacher, I would kind of give things to students and say, okay, you can kind of do this, but because you, you can't quite get it, we're going to simplify yep. this down to something simpler than the song itself, and we're going to put it into an exercise. Yeah. And that's the whole idea. Is play, mm -hmm. Definitely play songs. But if songs aren't giving you your technique, then take it into an exercise where you can and isolate that focus. technique. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's something that that's come up uh, in conversation about uh, the exercise packs in general. Uh, a lot of people see them as lessons, but they're they're not lessons. Well, if you don't if you don't know how to do the technique, you could treat it as a lesson. But right. it's m it's more of a of just a technique drill. Yeah, just something to return to. Like you could use them as a warm up. You could use them yeah. to, like you said, focus on a, a, a trouble area, a mm -hmm. part that you, an issue that you're having. Like if you can't hammer on between your second and fourth finger, this is a good way to practice that. Uh, yeah. One thing I wanted to add too, with in terms of hammer ons, is getting an even sound because, mm -hmm. like, you know, you may be able to hammer on with your pinky, but it may be a lot weaker sounding. If you yeah. can get, th if you can get an even volume with all of your fingers while you're going through like that, that is a exercise in and of itself, even if you already know how to do a hammer on or pull yep. off, doing it slowly in this kind of more controlled environment is beneficial. Uh, we talk about this a lot at the office too, which is like, there are times where you may be working on a technique, be it pull offs, bends, whatever, where a song is too much information to practice that technique. So yep. isolating the technique uh, will help you play a lot of songs, maybe not just that song. Even if just that song right. is the one that's giving you difficulty, you master that technique, you can take it into other songs, and then the instrument becomes more fun to play because you're not h hitting all these roadblocks, you know? Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, it's about having fun and enjoying music. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Uh, well, we're not going to look at hammer-ons or pull-offs right now. Right now, <laughs> we are going to look at string switching. 
uh, okay. on guitar. Uh, so we're going to do a couple of phrases of this exercise. And uh, yeah, again, if you have any questions, we're still collecting questions at UB Jurassic. My, I'm on the bottom. <laughs> oh, yeah. They should be the same. Yeah. <laughs> no, Andrew, you're on the top. There it is. Very nice. It's spookier and spookier. It is. <laughs> Actually, a good way to practice kind of like different whammy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you harmonizing with yourself? Is that what's <laughs> no? I'm just scooping into the notes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a cat. <laughs> I mean, like a sick one, but a cat all the same. I have a patented technique to get the guitar sound like a cat. We don't have to talk about that now. Good. It's really a, <laughs> like the stupidest Maybe thing ever. Yeah. All right. Um, Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> do, do, do you, do it's you, on my Instagram. Do you feed it kibble or something? No, I take my sweatshirt over here. If I, you need a sweatshirt, <laughs> if you mute it correctly, you can make it sound like. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we all made it. <laughs> but you need uh, a sweatshirt. <laughs> I hope your day is now complete, everyone. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, to look at some string switching, uh, mm -hmm. this one we selected Every Breath You Take mm -hmm. by The Police. Uh, this was another on disc track, but from uh, Rocksmith Remastered or Rocksmith 2014 edition remastered. Uh, so, what are we looking for on this one? I think this one, uh, of the techniques in this pack, this was one that was mostly focused on string switching. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. most most certainly spe mostly spe specifically for the, for the guitar part. Yeah. yeah, the guitar part. I mean, if 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 you can't gauge your distance from string to string on this, you're just not going to play it. Right. It's just it's just not going to happen. Right. Um, but uh, the bass part is actually pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it's a, just a pretty solid track of it. But uh, the guitar part really has to do with and that, you're playing that movement from you're playing yeah. the rhythm part. Yeah, I am. Um, because this is because the lead part takes on the vocals, uh -huh. the vocal melody. So we're just playing and the piano melody and the piano. So we're just playing straight guitar for this yep. one. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, and we are retuning and calibrating uh, yet again. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I, I probably would have had more things to say. I guess I can ask you some questions while while you're. I can make you think while you're trying to tune. Uh, so, uh, Beardy wants to know uh, how the backing tracks are recorded if they're done in house or just using software. Is there anything that you can speak of? Because you recorded these. Uh, Are you allowed I, to I, say? I, I can say, without naming any particular pieces of software yep. or companies that make it. Sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have a home studio, so I recorded all of this at home. Um, the drums were all programmed, uh, MIDI programming, and then uh, putting you know through good drum sounds and yep. good effects of the drums. Um, the... Bass lines were all obviously done on bass, but there's, especially in, in pack two, I put like some extra synths in the yeah. background of that uh, to kind of like enhance the sound a little bit for what we were working with. Uh, I did have the enjoyment of recording all my guitar parts through my boogie oh. because I'm a boogie fiend. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, that's, that's Mesa Boogie Mesa for those of you who don't know. Um, yeah, PRS and Mesa Boogie are my friends. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I have to use them when I record things. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, it's it's a blast recording at your at a home studio. If you can if you can make one, it's actually not that hard. Not that, I mean, it sounds like home studio, but it's like the software is so accessible now. Right. That if you have a computer that can just handle running the software and you and you get yourself a little you spend, interface, spend the time like so you're you good. Software, you can yeah. you can record anything you want. And. Uh, the the organ and the the other like synth parts uh, were those uh, sequenced or like programmed or were, did you play all them pl on all played okay. all played and then you know just the the beauty of, of playing and then recording the MIDI is oh yeah you can fix MIDI <laughs> as much as you want so let MIDI be your friend when sure. you're recording all right uh, well let's take a look at uh, every breath you take by the police. <laughs> Wrong key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I think you're just playing jazz. No? I don't know why I always thought this one was an A flat. Actually, this has some extra like palm muting in there, with, oh, yeah. which actually kind of adds to the whole idea of, of the technique being added in. Oh, this one's a real <laughs> stamina one. that goes on it. And actually, this this part is all about string skipping for the bass part. Yeah. Love to. Oh yeah. But I thought we weren't allowed to. It's I really figured, hard for me. I figured I'd remind you like halfway through the song. <laughs> it's really hard for me to not sing with this song playing, honestly. I'm singing it in my head. Yeah. Mainly because that's probably how everyone prefers to hear it. It's in my head. <laughs> I'd love to hear like a metal cover of this. I'll do it for a second. Uh, it's like, what, what would that sound? Oh, dear God. Break, if it's time you break, I'll be watching you. Wait, that was your metal cover? Yeah. It's like <laughs> mid-90s new metal. I don't think you listen to a lot of new metal in the mid-90s. <laughs> well, you know, like new metal pop. <laughs> grunge. <laughs> those are, those are totally new metal different. pop, grunge, you know, country. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yacht grunge. I'll be watching you. Yacht grunge. Yeah. Yacht grunge. I That's love yacht grunge. Wait, genre. if you have yacht metal, does it sink? <laughs> <laughs> I think the metal can float if it's. You know, con That's pretty con brutal. Uh, like capsized metal. Capsized good, metal. Yeah, great genre. Well, there is capsized metal. There great is, genre. There is pirate metal. <laughs> if there's pirate metal. Oh, there's a pyro there, metal. No, 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 like pirate. fire metal. Pirate metal. Oh, there's uh, Ned Flanders metal too. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds. Oakley, Oakley. Uh, every breath you take, not a type of metal. No, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. No, um, but it can be <laughs> if you play it your way, and your way happens to be metal. Yeah, like like I just did with you that. Were, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I do have some questions uh, for for the collected. Uh, Real Mr. Glasses wants to know uh, if there are any songs in the library with alt bass. It's rare, but I know of at least one song I that know, does. I know there are some. There yeah, was a, they, there do, was a, they do exist. There's there a Black Flag song. Yeah. It's just so rare that, that people actually record songs with any kind of alt bass part. Right. It, that it's it, it's rare that it ever right. comes up. But yeah, wh which ones do you know of? Uh, the only one that I can think of off the top of my head, and I'm sure uh, Toy Machine SH has been giving some in the uh, in the chat, but I know that there's a uh, better not better religion, uh, Black Flag song. Mm -hmm. Can't remember which what the name of it is, but Black Flag Song has uh, alternate bass. Are we getting other answers from behind the camera? Big, big Bottom by Oh, Big Bottom, bottom Big Bottom has uh, alt bass. Okay. Because it, it was recorded with a lot of bass. <laughs> oh, because of was. the Big Bottom, you got to have that. That's yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get uh, it. It wasn't my, it wasn't my joke. Oh. No, no it, was, it, was, it was Spinal Tap's joke. 
back in 1981. Or 82. So they 82. were way ahead of, the, way yeah. ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Danger Mouse 66 uh, says, I'm developing a habit of posting my pinky uh, right hand for accuracy. Is this a bad habit? I believe... You mean like to this? To anchor it? I believe that's what Danger Mouse is, is suggesting. Well, I anchor using my third finger, but um, I think... Uh, it's good to have an anchor with your right hand so you're not just flailing in the air, you know? Um, but um, I again, I don't know for sure uh, if Danger Mouse is talking about guitar or bass. Uh, I so guitar. Oh. so I, I have seen very good guitar players uh, the chat right that anchor yeah. yeah, and really good ones who don't. Yeah. It's, it's just a, so me personally, I, I can't stand anchoring on this side. Yeah. You like for no playing guitar or for bass, like uh, to to anchor one of my fingers below the strings, like drives me nuts. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I see plenty of people who do it, and they're like totally solid, and it works for them. So, um, my response would be that it, it's not at all a problem unless it causes a problem in your playing. So it's if it's keeping you from if it's keeping you stable and it's not holding you back from playing anything, then yeah. use it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I've, I, s I've totally seen people do it and, and execute well, amazing things. From an ergonomic standpoint, for my pers my body personally, I, yeah. I have found that I've reduced wrist pain by trying to anchor this direction uh, with my oh. wrist. Um, I anchor on that side. Right. Yeah. I anchor this way. Yeah, I because it's less with movement. With bass, I tend to anchor on the pickup. Yeah. Which I don't think is uncommon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yes, oh, yeah. Like that? Yeah. 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 Especially or if you're finger picking. Like, this this is extremely common. But for yeah. guitar, um, yeah, I, I actually anchor on, on this side just like north of where I'm picking. Yeah. yeah. But and again, I've seen people do it both ways. And so you just have to, you have to close in if you want to palm mute, basically. Yeah. 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 I've been trying to switch to that, uh, as I said, from an ergonomic perspective. I, I haven't heard anything like it's bad for you to anchor this way, but um, yeah. it depends on how many hours a day you're, you're playing. But I've, I've been, I've, I've ha I find it hard. When I do fast picking, I always revert to anchoring this way because that's how I did it when I was young. And, you yeah. know. Um, and uh, Roymond wants to know if there's a way to make requests for future exercise packs. Uh, so there's the request page that would normally let you make your requests for, you know, traditional songs or even like soundtrack songs. Uh, but for exercises, that's something that we just kind of keep an eye out for um, in, in the on the forums, on our social media pages. If there are certain certain techniques, we are keeping an eye on those uh, those channels. So forums, social media. Uh, if, if there's if there are things that you're wondering about, we are keeping an eye out on those places. Uh, and there was another question. I don't think you could totally answer this, uh, but Lloyd Daring too uh, wants to. He asks, I would like to know if there are any plans to do the exercises from uh, improvising with style. Uh, that might just be a plug. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that's. Style, I think it's. I think it's improvising. Well, the question is improvising. Oh, improvising but I think they're talking about improvising with knowledge. Uh, that has but not been a topic of conversation. But how I don't would know. that like how would you uh, I get we you did have there was an encore mm -hmm. uh, where you talked about improvisation yeah uh, do you remember when that was if you want to look for it on uh, uh, maybe video on six to eight months ago with Dan something like that so it was it was more than eight months ago. it was more than ten months ago uh, oh it was before I got it. yes yes yeah. so, so I guess it was more than ten so that's, um, that's how I so just, just to recap for anybody who doesn't know what what uh, Dan and I did is we we essentially did a how to improvise lesson uh, based off of the system in my improvising with knowledge book and so we took the methodology of that book and kind of broke it down on screen for everybody to, to kind of see how it works um, I don't think there's anything intrinsically in conversation about that happening uh, again maybe another encore would be cool mm -hmm. if, if there's people who are interested in that encore did you use session mode uh, I believe we... Or did you just use keep it in, uh, keep the tones up? You know, to remember things that are 10 months <laughs> it ago. It was a long time ago. I guess we could always go back and watch the I'd have the, to uh, check my Google demand. calendar. Yeah, sure. That's where everything... That's where all my memory is. All right, yeah, at this me point. too. Me too. I, yeah. I don't remember anything from <laughs> moment to moment. So uh, right now, we're going to take another quick break. Uh, Andrew, thank you very much thank for you. joining us. Uh, Greg, please stay right where you are. I'm not moving. Uh, we are going to take a look at a video. Uh, this is one of our 60-day challenge videos. Uh, this one features uh, a Brian, uh, which there, there are lots of Brians about in, in the Rocksmith team. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, player named Brian uh, who went through the 60-day challenge. If you're not sure what the 60-day challenge is, uh, it's, it's a concept where if you play uh, for 60 days, an hour a day, uh, you watch how much you improve in that time. 
Uh, and we're going to take a look at Brian's journey over that 60 days. While that's happening, UB Jurassic is going to weigh five copies of uh, the Rocksmith Easy Exercises 2, Volume 2. Uh, give away five copies of those on Steam in chat. So please watch out for UB Jurassic in chat while you watch this video. And we'll be back with uh, some more music after that. My name is Brian Redmond, and I'm 18 years old. When I was a freshman in high school, I realized, you know, I always just played sports, and like, that was it, you know? And then I was like, well, maybe guitar. You know, guitar's cool. People play guitars around a campfire. So I went and took like six lessons, right? It was like once a week. At first, it was so cool, you know? It's like, I got an electric guitar. It's this cool, cool guitar. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like, I, I think this is gonna be awesome. I used it like three times. With the schedule I had with playing sports, I was just like, it's not worth it to me at this time. I would love to do it, but like, I, it's just not working. I took lessons five years ago now. And I know you're supposed to strum and hold the pick. And besides that, I couldn't tell you a thing. I think there's there's six strings. There's six strings on a guitar. I, I can almost I can almost be positive on that. I think. I'm definitely struggling with um, with the chords themselves. I can't figure out how you're supposed to lightly hold this string while you hit it and then let go and like make a noise. Like I'm really struggling with that. My strumming has got quicker, like where I can hit faster notes, and I really like fast notes and fast songs. I'm actually getting the right finger in where I need to be um, on quick, hard chords, so I'm really happy about that. It's really becoming a serious hobby for me, and my friends and family are noticing that, and it's cool to see them see me, especially now that I'm getting better. At first, I was kind of like, don't look at me, because I'm, I'm no good, you know? But now I'm proud of how I've progressed, and I'm glad that they can see that. What's most important for me right now is that my progress is continuing to improve. I think I'm kind of making some big steps here. I'm just, I'm just really happy with, with where I'm at right now. Before I started, if someone told me I would be where I'm at now at day 60 with playing the guitar, I'd call them crazy. Everyone was making fun of me, you know, at first, like, we know who you are, you're not musical, like, it's not gonna happen. Everyone that I talked to was like, well, go take guitar lessons, like, that's how it's gonna happen. If not, you're just, you're looking for an easy way out. But when they started seeing the results, they're shocked. I feel like, yes, I can call myself a guitar player now, but I want to become even a better guitar player, and I want to keep going. Rocksmith, the 60-day challenge, was just the start of what's, you know, hopefully yet to come. Hello and welcome back to this week's Rocksmith Developer Stream. Uh, I remain uh, your host and community developer, Doug Lilly. Welcome. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. And uh, good luck if that raffle's still going on. Otherwise, congratulations to the winner. If we're drawing the raffle names currently, uh, a bit of both. I'd like to say hello. Uh, welcome back, Greg Studley. How are you doing? Oh, hey. Hi. Hey there. Hi. And uh, oh, we have we have a special guest. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Sorry, I was just reading a guitarist <laughs> guide to improvising with knowledge. Oh wait, uh -huh. hold on. There's a critical path I need to. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. What is this? Oh, that's my book, Greg. Oh, it is. This that's, is your that's book. That's my book. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> We're both that? in trouble now for yeah. plugging. Sorry but about uh, yeah, that. it was kind of funny. You you brought up improvising with knowledge, and it was perfectly behind Andrew's back. <laughs> so I wanted to give it a little screen time and because he, now it's perfectly behind. And my he gave no thought to 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 grabbing the book. And showing no. it, yeah, none. Andrew, Andrew. He was busy talking. He was, yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> Don't I, speak. I can't do anything else when I when I talk. Everybody knows uh, that. So, um, 
Dan, hi. Uh, you're our substitute Sharon today. I am, yes. Sharon was going to do this, but she ran into some problems with stuff that was on her plate that really yeah. needed to be done. And I said, By actual work. oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, easy exercises. I, I can probably handle those. And then the song and in question, I thought I could play. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to find out. Yeah. Um, Did you I already take your selfie? Uh, no, oh, oh, Sharon always takes the selfie. I even oh, left my phone downstairs. No. All right. I was, yeah, uh, That's sorry. All right. That's all good. And I'm paying attention now, so it's yeah. too late. <laughs> uh, That's true. <laughs> Inside joke. So uh, you, you might know. Dan also brought <coughs> an extra special guest. Oh, no. I, no let, Are we going to wait? Yeah, wait? let's do that later. Okay. Let's do that later, because I'm not getting into that. Let, let's, let's. Okay, fine, fine, let's fine. Let's stay fine, focused, fine. and then <laughs> we'll end with a good argument. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, well, the first thing that you're going to look at uh, is the sort of later uh, phrases of the linear playing, linear playing exercise from this volume of easy exercises. Uh, have you practiced? Not this, no. Okay. I practiced the song, okay. but I figured I could just sort of... It'll be good. I, I could Probably. wing it. And then I found out that we're starting on level 9 out of 12. <laughs> which, so just means, which just means it's, it's a bit faster. I said all of this stuff, like if you try to put it into a melodic context, it sounds like RPG boss fight music <laughs> or something like that. It's, yeah, a couple yeah. people said they were getting a Castlevania vibe. Oh, so yeah, it's nice. like, Congratulations. It's like it's I didn't it's realize yeah, it was going there. It's kind of like a little bit spooky. Yeah. Sort of like oh yeah, the, the, like these patterns when you when you think about them, yeah, as, as if they, there's lots of like tritones that are getting stuck <laughs> yeah. in here. And, oh yeah, all kind it's of a very stuff. sinister roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's a dark ride. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. All right, uh, let's look at linear playing. What do you mean when you say linear playing? Yeah, what do you? Mean oh well, you if you notice, like we have you know a set of four notes that are all happening on the same string, so. Linear playing is all about staying on the same string and playing a sequence of notes. Where which did you start? Well, this one was starting on a, uh, anchor 10, because you can see 10, 11, 12, and 13. You're on 9. Now, you're on now we're going to move it to 11. There you go. And it's 1, 3, 2, 4. 1, 3, 2, 4. Just think about it like a number sequence. 1, 3, 2, 4. I can, I can do that. I know you can. Ooh, two, Four, two, three. I, I want to do this as a string two, skipping exercise. Three, three, That's my problem. Well, um, you're in luck, Dan. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Because now it's time for string skipping. Yeah. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Maybe I'll play this one right then. You sure? <laughs> you, should just play, you should play linear playing over the string skipping. <laughs> the, you know what? I'm a slow learner, so that'll probably happen now. <laughs> so to skip a string... Is to to jump over a string that you're not playing and go over and play a string that, that you want. That to play. is correct. All if right. you were to go to the the next available string, you would be string. And this is a four string switching. bass. There's only so many I can jump. Only so, so many it combinations. Should be fairly straightforward. I I believe it should. In fact, I I, I think it's fair to say that these exercises are all going to have you jump over just a single string. So you oh can good. Even anticipate that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think you're now that far I've overestimating now that I, my abilities. <laughs> now that I've told you <laughs> that you can anticipate it. All right. You should be anticipating. All right. Anticipate well then. this. String skipping. <laughs> anticipate this. Anticipate <laughs> this. Right, That's favorite, what I heard. It's my favorite movie from the 90s. Oh, I forgot to skip over a string. <laughs> <laughs> I apparently did not anticipate I did correctly. <laughs> I wrote this. I just wrote these. I don't. I don't want to yeah. play it. <laughs> yeah, this one makes much more sense. You okay. should get rid of the other one. Oh, it good. Doesn't, it doesn't work for me. I should have asked your input. I'm very sorry. Yeah. Before I produced all of this stuff. Yeah. My apologies. For Now, as you could hear, Dan was harmonizing <laughs> yeah. all of the parts, which is, yeah. uh, which no, is actually I, a really horrible cool. bull is what it was. Yeah, I was just I was off by a fret on most of those. I was trying to. I appreciate that, but let's. <laughs> I own my mistakes. <laughs> I, I own my mind. mistakes, Greg. <laughs> okay, one has to take responsibility for twenty six percent. Was that what it was? I usually don't <laughs> the score. Yeah, I well, I mean, you know, we started late in the song, yeah. So we got zero for everything That's up true. to That's that. That is true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh boy, the accuracy. Mastery, <laughs> sure, but accuracy, <laughs> that's a different thing. Uh, yeah, I didn't look at that number, thank <laughs> God. Um, are we going uh, to have to tune and recalibrate again? I, I, I don't no? know. I'm, I'm, no. I'm hoping no. David says no. Uh, so jump right back so the song that Dan is joining us on. 
Yeah. Ironically enough. After that great warm up. Ironically enough. What song are you playing? Don't speak. Okay. Which is what you tell me all the time <laughs> at my desk. <laughs> That's not true. He acts like he acts like I'm the abusive one at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> that could be further from the truth. Keeps me I in my little <laughs> box and says, shut up and keep doing whatever it is that you do for the team now that you're not calm dev. Rattle the cage. That's exactly right. Hit with a baton. <laughs> Worse. A baton. Worse than a baton. <laughs> a large piece of wood. <laughs> Roughly worked, shaped. That, yeah. Like a guitar? Yeah, a guitar shaped object, but. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's, all right, we're going to get all into right, this. So, uh, don't speak, no doubt. The only song uh, from, from this uh, stream uh, that was not on disc. On one of the Rock oh. Smith. Uh, this is from the No Doubt Song Pack, which came out in August of 2014. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at No Doubt Don't Speak. This does and jump around a lot. And this covers, this is another one that covers pretty much all the techniques. Uh, yeah. On the bass. Well, and in the guitar solo. Requests for dancing. Ooh. Sorry, the song is called Don't Speak, and that, that it's not don't to sing. Oh, don't sing. Damn. There it is. It's not like I can't hit the notes. <laughs> you guys got video of me singing out there all the time. You don't need it here live. the cord was double stops too you can walk away from.
<laughs> oh. oh. Don't uh, speak. <laughs> 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 um. I, I love I love Tony Canal's bass. And yeah. that was I'm I just want to apologize. <laughs> for doing such a terrible <laughs> job on it. <laughs> no. It's a really interesting line. It does move yeah. around a lot. There's a lot of little personal embellishments and stuff, uh, but it's constantly moving. It's a really, a really yeah. fun bass. Honestly, He's a very yeah. inventive bass player, that very melodic. The and whole I really pack, like if, doing his stuff. If you're a bassist and you haven't played through those songs... It's worth it. It certainly it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Every one of those songs <laughs> is incredibly fun on bass, and it makes your user pinky. Yes. It, yeah. it demands it I mean, of you. I mean, sometimes I was hitting the wrong fret with it, but I was using my pinky throughout, and it's it's definitely one that it's like, yeah. what are my pinky skills like? That will prove that will show yeah. you your current status. <laughs> right. Um, let's see. Do I have anything? Uh, no, I think uh, I think we're we're about good on questions. So is it time now? Uh, sure. I All right. Now that now that. All right, th now it's time for like Rocksmith the real world <laughs> because this this is this is ripped from the headlines if of our desk. So Doug and I sit next to each other. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, those of you uh, we we have a, a designer who's currently in the Osaka office. Yes. Uh, uh, Jolie Menzel. She has a, a rich history at Telltale. She worked on a lot of Telltale games. If you've played those, you've probably uh, played her work. And uh, she brought in a guitar and she said, "Hey, I've got a guitar." can I play this in Rocksmith? And I looked at it and I said no. <laughs> uh, because this guitar is, she got it for 25 bucks from a friend at, at her old job. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's like one of those creepy 60s uh, Japanese let's cash in on the Beatles kind of guitars where they were making like really cheap uh, one pickup, crappy guitars. These are the kind of things that like Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys loves, right? Because it's like they're so lo-fi and they're so funky and nothing yeah. else feels or sounds like them, but they're also not particularly well made. So I said, yeah, I, don't, I, I would recommend that you get a new guitar. She's like, well, do you want this one? I'm like, not particularly. So <laughs> what I always thought we would do is hang it up here say, in the studio somewhere. It's just so it would be no. like, uh, you know, it, it's, it's best, it's a guitar-shaped object in my world. And again, I am a uh -huh. guitar snob, but... <laughs> It's a guitar-shaped object, and it should just be there for decoration. So it kicks around the office. Here's the best part. We had a person who was really into it. It has an old gold foil pickup in it. He goes, oh, these things are great. And I'm like, seriously, man, if you want it, take it. It's okay. Like, it's, you know, Jolie left it for us to do whatever we want. Uh, like, we can put another pickup in there just for visual stuff if we decide to use it as a wall decoration. He's like, this is going to be amazing. And he was super excited. And he took it home, and it showed up the next day, and he never said why he brought it back. But I said, <laughs> how'd that work out? He goes, it didn't. And that was it. That's all I ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> so cursed, this is all 100% cursed, true. Cursed object. So yeah, so it's, it's lying around the office, and everybody's like, what's that? I'm like, nothing you should pay attention to. What Do you need a guitar to play? I'll help Something you find one that's in the office yeah. that I know has been fixed up or tuned up, and that's kind of you know one of my hobbies here is that I try to keep the fleet running, right? Yeah. So um, <laughs> Doug finds this thing, and I'm like, oh, oh, you don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that. Yeah. Doug decides he wants that, because Doug <laughs> looks like a hipster and decides that what a hipster would play is something that nobody wants that has no function. So show, show them this okay. guitar. Uh, so here's Let's what... See. Now, in its day, I'm sure it was fine, but we're talking about like maybe an inch-thick body yeah. of mystery wood. It's super light. Uh, very lightweight, nothing. one pickup in the middle. Oh, it smells like my hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely a short scale, you know, crappy little tuners. It is made in Japan. It still has the sticker says made in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, my, I looked it up and found out that I think it was a Tiesco or a Harmony. Uh, okay. it, was, it, was, it was under the... But all it says, I love this, all it says on the, the headstock is like a sticker yeah. that says prestige. <laughs> so this is the prestige guitar. And oh, it is. again, it's like it joins the body at the fifteenth fret or something. Uh, you know, like it's it's pretty insane. And uh, you know, I did try to tweak. It's got a zero fret. There's nothing inherently yeah. wrong with a zero fret, but it was generally at the time yeah. uh, the sign of a poorly built guitar that was like sort of rushed out. Like we don't want to do all the math that's involved <laughs> with getting the scale or the frets right. Let's throw a zero fret on there. Kind of it excuses us, and we can make these faster. So uh, it, the action was very high. The bridge will stab you in the hand if you if you touch it. Um, and so I, I did uh, give it a college try to try to like put new strings on it, lightweight strings, so that we would take a little tension off the neck. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is still no, forget it. Forget I love it. it. So no, and <laughs> Doug adopted it like it was a lost puppy that needed to be. Please That's note exactly that Doug <laughs> has actually printed out a picture 
of the Christmas tree from a Charlie Brown Christmas, the unloved Christmas tree. <laughs> Greg didn't see that. I knew that there was nobody there. loved but Charlie Brown, right? So that's that's what Doug thinks this is. He thinks this is a rescue <laughs> mission for an unloved yeah. artifact. Like I'm not gonna like it's still neglected. Like I'm not gonna do any maintenance. No, I'm not gonna, like, repair you got to keep it in a sad state. Yeah. But yeah. you still play it. Now yeah. I am stunned, first of all, that it does work with Rocksmith, and you have made positive sounds out of this guitar. Yes. I as a joke one day, just came over being a bully and ripped it out of your hands. Almost, he was <laughs> resting his wrist on that spike I see these, on the, the on the, on these the like posts? wheels. Yeah, the posts for the bridge. Stick and again, there's no intonation, like folks. It's not even a wraparound bridge well, like you might find in an old Les Paul. Not all of the frets like work. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You were showing me that you, the other day. You press the the thirteenth <laughs> fret, and it is the same note from the thirteenth to the sixteenth yeah, fret on the high step. E. It skips a whole step and then remains <laughs> on the tone. <laughs> <laughs> and then continues on. It does that again later on. I almost caused Doug to bleed profusely <laughs> from his wrist. <laughs> or at least give me tetanus. Yeah. Have a shot. So, Maybe. and I keep saying, like, again, Doug, you sit next to me. You've seen what has been my hobby all summer. I'm picking up cheap guitars, turning them into better guitars, learning my skills as I go. Yeah. But then I'm releasing them back into the wild. I'm selling them or I'm giving them to people. And I'm like, Doug, you could have the Stray Cat Strat, that little, that little Squire Strat, you know, like great starter guitar. I would, you know, I would give it to you for a great deal. It's fine. And he's like, nope. And so I would even like, <laughs> I would physically take it out of your hands, put a better guitar in your hands, and you're like, nope, I'm, I miss this thing. So David, Doug, and I all sit in sort of like a little corner. And I get and picked on incessantly. Like nonstop. I never thought I would be a bully, but I am absolutely <laughs> a guitar bully. Hashtag guitar bully. He's, he's laid absolutely. hands on me. I have, times. yeah, um, and and David thankfully has my back here. He's not yeah. as physical as right. I am. Obviously, I'm a right. bruiser, but he's but much more <laughs> emotionally. Yeah, sort of he and I piercing. are both urging Doug. It's like an addiction for you, and we're yeah, trying and to help you get clean, and, bro. And, and the more, the more, the more you hit me with it, the more I, I just hold tightly. It's an intervention. Guitar. It's become part of my. You're just at this reinforcing point. it every time you tell him. It's an intervention. To let go. I know. He just yeah. holds he on just, tighter. I don't tell me exactly. what to do. You don't tell me exactly. what You're to do. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> no, I just, I just want to point out. Yeah. If, if you had, <laughs> if you had perhaps balanced your fingers here when you were playing, then yeah, then I then wouldn't have. That wouldn't have had. So <laughs> broken skin there are the some advantages for <laughs> bracing Thanks. your hand here. It clearly yes. wasn't my fault. <laughs> That I was a jerk and ripped it out of his hands. So this is no, the guitar. That, this is uh, this is Dan the guitar. It's not Dan the guitar. <laughs> and I will sue you for defamation <laughs> no. of character it's if you call that Dan the guitar. It's short for it Dano. is the Prestige. That's what it is. It's the Prestige guitar because it's an ironic it's name, like a, and you're an ironic guitar. hipster that needs to have an ironic guitar. I'm not. A, no, I'm okay. I'm not ironic. I have play gold on the ceiling. See how it goes. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Great. Probably yeah, probably perfect. would. Gold in no, the pickup. No. There's no. <laughs> There's gold no gold there's foil no, in the ceiling. There's no irony in my affection for that guitar. That's what makes me sad. You really do sincere. believe it, that it's it's like a quality guitar that deserves no, your love. No, that's also not. That's okay, then no, what is no, it? No, no the, the, that it is so unloved is what makes me drawn to See, it. Well, this is why I'm drawn and to the Gibson Modern, but <laughs> I don't have a Modern because right. I'm not allowed we should to get have a Modern. A modern. I'm not allowed to bring a Modern into the house. This has been discussed. But don't don't bring it to the house. Just leave it in the studio. So they like like all that. Oh, so all yeah. right. So Doug is yeah. pro the Prestige. I am anti the Prestige. Greg, you are literally in the middle of this argument. Oh no, that's why I'm still here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just what, realized my purpose. What is what is your ruling? What is your ruling as the guy who's do caught we, in the middle and you've heard and you've you seen wanna, the evidence? Do you want to plug it in? Do you no. want to? You should plug it in. You should plug I it in. I don't want to plug it I'll in. plug it in. <laughs> I'll play it. We'll see, let's see how it sounds. Is it, is this, oh, okay, no, we're, we're not. Don't, don't let Dan play it. He's going to make it sound good. That's, well, like well Dan's, Dan can't make any <laughs> instrument sound good, so please it's, don't. This uh, is like the weight of paper mache. Yeah, it's no, there's <laughs> nothing to it. You're wor- if you're wondering it's what kind of wood, it's paper mache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we figured that out. It's, uh, it's pulped and it's pressed. What kind of wood is that? Pulped and pressed. Yeah, I really, I honestly have no idea. Of course, now, I, I mean, I'm I'm plugging in here to the bass channel. <laughs> David may not. So oh, here, here. <laughs> you plug it in mine. David the also channel. hates it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, let me, let me just hear channel. what it sounds like. Let me just plug in here, and we'll get a nice pick. Did you buy that at Ikea? I didn't buy it. Oh, Yeah. Oh, now oh, it sounds there great. It is. See, obviously. Okay, I love this guitar. Now. <laughs> 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 
But uh, see, like this is the Black Keys thing. Like yeah. if you do something like Rootsy and Nasty or Jack Whitey, you know, like yeah. this would be a really yeah. good like. How many? Oh, this would be funny if I played this in front of eighty thousand people. You know, <laughs> right? But yeah, it's not. It's it's not a good. Three of the grommets are missing from yeah, the tuners. Don't need them. <sighs> it's not going to stay good anyway. Having heard it. Well, let me let me play it. Like, uh, yeah, now now I you can't, can't not. I can't I can't give an opinion without. Would you like a pick? It. Or do you I don't even feel like I'm. Oh my god! It. Listen to that. We'll plug it all the way in. Yeah. Well, th- is it? <laughs> don't do that. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's when you know. That's a quality instrument. <laughs> I never plug it in. It's it's. I mostly just play it. What that's not this, true. Like, you rhythmic, plug it in like, a rocksmith all the time. Not all the time. Infrequently. Hey, let's turn on the uh, the Marshalls today. No. I like the tone, and certainly with your hands, it sounds a lot better. It, it so feels it's me. It it feels <laughs> it feels guitar, like a toy. Me. I believe that a guitar should be evaluated on ergonomics first and tone second, because you can change any pickup, you can make okay, any so, modifications so, so, to the so, wiring so you want, but if it doesn't feel right, yeah. then it should... This is, is... Is this a guitar made for ants? I mean, it's, it's no, so I mean, small. It's, it's, it, I, I mean, I wouldn't call him an ant. Why don't you, you at know. home decide? <laughs> oh, oh, I like that. Can we, can we set up a survey online? Maybe. I mean, oh, my God. Probably do. Every, every guitar that is like. made deserves to have some love, Okay. Or it's a wood just, chipper, one of the two. It's just a matter of whether it's loved by the garbage can or a person. Yeah. The prestige. Uh, turns out everybody's gone. Everybody tuned out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't, don't blame <laughs> them because this is just a fight now. <laughs> Again, tonally, not yeah. bad. Yeah, it certainly sounds the, better when Greg plays it than when we, either we of should, us play We it. should show off <laughs> this part. <laughs> oh, so yeah, yeah, that's right. You were showing uh, me this high e string oh. from 12. <laughs> oh, I like that part. So chromatic. <laughs> that's nice. Those are all individual frets, uh, in case you can't tell. <laughs> it's a songwriting aid. It automatically has a <laughs> whole, whole half. <laughs> whole, whole, whole half. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had to. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Uh, the Doug Caster. Oh, I, I, uh, I think the Doug Caster <laughs> the is Dan nice. Caster. The Doug Caster Prestige. Yeah, it's... um. It's all yours. <laughs> you, you won't. I won't be tapping you to play it. it okay. You deserve it's, this. It's, it's, okay. it's yours if you want to play it. I said, I look at all the beautiful guitars we have around the the office. Would you like me to bring a different one up so that we can, ha- you know, if somebody doesn't bring a guitar up and they just want, oh, I'll just grab whatever's here. <laughs> no, no. I think honestly, I think my my one part of my affection for the guitar is my need to not be a bother. What I don't do you wanna, mean? I don't want to lay claim to a guitar that someone else might want to use. Oh, so, so, you, it's, so it's, it's a lack of, of faith and, and, and love of yourself. That uh, yeah. You're like, I don't deserve <laughs> a better guitar. No, 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 no. It's just I don't want to I don't want to take a proper guitar from the hands of someone else. Doug, play a proper guitar. Well, I have one at home for the office. Do you realize how well this works for lounge music while you guys are arguing? <laughs> that, I think I found its purpose. Like, that's you next guys week's show. And somebody <laughs> just sits back here playing Girl from Ipanema. Yeah. Tall well, and tan and young and lovely, the girl from Ipanema goes walking, and when she walks, she goes, and she passes, well, goes. So um, <sighs> I think we've, we've given enough evidence. Uh, well, I'll check it's the chat later guitar. and uh, <laughs> determine by how much I won. It's um, a terrible guitar. In the meantime, hey, let's have our final giveaway. <laughs> People Is anyone still there? Uh, I mean, I, I've kind of timed out, so it says no reason <laughs> to chat, but I see chat moving. So We know you're out yeah, there. Yeah, we know your people are in there. I just don't know how many. There left. you go. But we we are nothing <laughs> if not transparent. That is the actual <laughs> argument that has been raging in the office for at least yeah. three weeks. Like I've been, I've been picking longer, on you hard yeah. for three weeks. I think ever since I moved, ever since my desk was moved next to yours, <laughs> you yeah, to when I have to it. see it every day, yeah, <laughs> and hear it. Like he'll start talking to me, and as he's talking to me, I'll, I'll pick it up and start playing it. And, and it just it, it derails everything. <laughs> I don't get anything done anymore. <laughs> so annoying. Yeah. Anyway, um, hey, uh, let's give away an Ernie Ball prize pack. All right, <sighs> certainly much higher quality than <laughs> the Prestige. That I'll give you. All right. Okay, so for your chance to win an Ernie Ball prize pack, please listen to what Yibi Jurassic is saying in the chat right now. Uh, he will uh, collect your raffles, uh, and you do need to be following this channel in order for a chance to win. Uh, you'll follow his instructions, and if you win, uh, he will whisper you. He will get your full name, your shipping address, and your telephone number. We need all that information in order to get the prize to you. And if you're outside of the U.S., please put up your address line by line to make it a little bit easier for me to get your prize to you. Uh, that prize pack. Hey, Dan, uh, if your mic is on, uh, what's in that prize pack? Uh, well, you know, uh, this is going to test how how much 
uh, power does a Wonder Wipe really have? <laughs> Not enough to improve the prestige, I but probably. it will improve your guitar, uh, especially if you are, care about cleaning your strings or polishing your guitar or putting uh, the, the necessary oils back in the wood of your fretboard. All of those things is what the Wonder Wipe system from Ernie Ball does. Uh, plus, uh, you're going to get to not only that, but also, th I love this, a crank. You're going to get a tiny yeah. little crank that you can put on your tuner to tune up the string. It's a string, it's a peg winder. Uh, if your pegs actually have grommets, uh, you know, three of them anyway, <laughs> then this will work pretty well. If It'll not, this will help you grind it out for the other things. Uh, it will give you brand new strings, which would be a waste on the prestige. Uh, but you'll get a brand new set of tens. I don't recommend it. I think we have nines on there. I hope we have nines on there. Yeah. Because otherwise, that ne oh, we could put 11s on there, and maybe it'll just die. Maybe it'll just don't snap in two. Hey, uh, also, we could put bass strings on it. Let's uh, keep the focus on the price pack. I am. Uh, what happens if somebody has an acoustic guitar? Does that uh, pegwinder help them there? Oh, but of course, because yeah. they use strings too, and they the do. tuners are very similar between acoustics and, and isn't electrics. And there isn't there a special feature of the pegwinder for use with an acoustic guitar? It guitars? is. A lot of people don't know why there's a little U-shaped notch in the edge, but that is so that you can help you leverage that against your saddle on the bridge so that you can pry out without using pliers or your teeth. I have seen it. Uh, you, you pop out the, uh, the bridge yes. pin, yep. the end bridge pin. pin. But uh, always loosen your strings before you do yes, that. Yes, do not <laughs> always loosen the strings first, no matter what you're doing with anything for maintenance yes. for the guitar. It's ridiculous. I have seen uh, people yes. try to pop them out while the strings were still tight and took me almost popped their eye out. Yeah, it took yeah. me several years to f figure out that that's what that little U-shaped notch is mm -hmm. in the thing. But you'll also uh, get uh, a strap, yep. which is uh, which you know they're right right now they're they're still sort of Ferrari red. They're yeah, bright I've fire got, engine red. I have one. Uh, There's one now here. Is the strap yes? But straps do make it more difficult to drop a prestige, don't they? Uh, they do. Uh, look at where the strap button is placed on the upper horn, please. You're also going to get twelve <laughs> of Ernie Ball's picks okay. and uh, a few of our Spectrum Plectrum. It's <laughs> like they didn't even want to take a risk. They put it all the way around to let gravity do one hundred percent of the work. I almost like that one thing about this guitar <laughs> because I'm like. Hey, you know, like it's if not, it's not, it's not falling. It's, it's not, not falling. Yeah. It's pretty secure. It's going to look terrible, but it is secure. So, oh, what was it going to fall <laughs> over? You were afraid it was going to get damaged there for a second. I, I didn't want to scratch the wall. So, in any case, we <laughs> hope that you win. If you didn't yes. win the first one, here's your opportunity. And of course, if you didn't, if you don't win this new one, come on back next week. Yeah. We'll be doing we will. most of this uh, next with, week. We'll doing yeah, we'll doing a stream like this next week, mm. uh, but but focused on a single pack. Oh, oh yeah, like, yeah. New DLC is new coming again new next DLC week. New DLC is coming next week, and if you want uh, a little sneak preview of what's coming, uh, why don't you head to our forums tomorrow morning? Uh, we'll be posting a clue uh, that I believe will be posted by UB Jurassic probably around uh, ten nine ten a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so check out the forms. If you go to rocksmith.com, uh, there's a link to the forums there. Uh, UB Jurassic is probably or somebody is probably posting a link to the forums in chat as we speak. Uh, also, uh, while you're on the internet, uh, why don't you stop by uh, our our Twitter and Instagram homes. We are at Rocksmith Game uh, on both of those platforms, just as we are at this channel on Twitch. Uh, and we're also on Facebook, just facebook.com slash Rocksmith will get you to your uh, appropriate regional version of the Rocksmith Facebook page. Uh, so thanks for joining us very much. I want to thank all of our guests, especially uh, Greg Studley, the, uh, the, the heart, soul, and mind behind uh, the exercise packs, also and the fingers and fingers, the fingers behind fingers. Very These important exercise on packs. this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, like uh, like Dan said, we'll be back next week uh, with with new music. And thank you. Here's one more look at Rocksmith Easy Exercises Volume Two. <laughs> <laughs>